In this episode, we are going to learn about the origins of the HPD and how it shaped the department we have today. Why major traffic collisions take time to investigate. And why you won't see these HPD personnel ever carry a firearm or taser. To find the official roots of the Honolulu Police Department, you'd have to go back some 83 years when the Governor's Advisory Committee on Crime recommended the creation of a police commission, whose purpose would be to appoint the Chief of Police to oversee police department operations. This action officially established the Honolulu Police Department on January 22, 1932. Charles F. Weber was the first police commission's unanimous choice for HPD's first Chief of Police and was given full authority to organize the department. After only seven months on the job, Chief Weber resigned and became a member of the police commission. This would result in William Gabrielson's appointment as HPD's second chief of police, a title he would hold for the next 14 years. Chief Gabrielson's achievements include the division of Oahu into police beats, the creation of the Traffic Violations Bureau and Juvenile Crime Prevention Bureau. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, Oahu's population doubled due to the presence of the armed forces. Despite the unprecedented increase, serious crime on the island decreased, mainly due to the imposition of martial law and blackout and curfew regulations, as well as nearly 100% employment rate. Unfortunately for HPD, internal issues would soon surface. In the mid-1940s, the Honolulu prosecutor and attorney general investigated HPD for corruption involving several police officers accused of protecting gambling houses that had flourished in the city. This resulted in the conviction of one officer, numerous suspensions, and the resignation of Chief Gabrielson. Though this was a low point for the department, it would eventually emerge stronger, reorganized, and with a new set of values. Shortly thereafter, William Ho'opai was appointed the department's third chief of police. He created an elite unit of officers whose main purpose was to combat gang violence. Their role was eventually expanded to include SWAT, bomb, and helicopter units. Today, this division is known as the Specialized Services Division. Two years later, Dan Liu was appointed the fourth chief of police. Service, honor, integrity became the department's motto. He established the highly popular Police Activities League. Over the years, PAL has expanded from the traditional sports to include canoe paddling, culinary arts, and robotics. Hawaii, like the rest of the nation, was faced with anti-war protests, drug abuse, and general disrespect for law and order during the 1960s. New approaches to police work were needed, including more educated police force. Chief Liu supported the creation of a new field of study, police science, at the University of Hawaii. Today, it is known as the Administration of Justice Program. A cadet training program for recent high school graduates was also started, enabling 20-year-olds to enter the police academy as early as possible. As Hawaii became a popular tourist destination, it also became a cooling-off area for criminals on the run. Francis Keala became Chief of Police on Christmas Eve 1969. He quickly achieved notoriety when he launched a large-scale covert operation to attack rising property crime and illegal drugs. Dubbed Operation Hukilao, it used a false storefront to take in stolen property. More than 100 people were arrested and 500 property crimes solved during an 18-month period. Operation Green Harvest focused on the eradication of marijuana. Narcotics officers would rappel from helicopters into remote parts of Oahu to recover thousands of illegal marijuana plants that were often booby-trapped. In the 1970s alone, more than 47,000 pounds of marijuana was recovered, with an estimated street value today of over $2.5 billion. And while the streets of Honolulu were becoming safer, other changes were taking place within HPD. 
The communications division hired its first civilian radio dispatchers, allowing more officers to take on patrol duties. The communication system evolved from telephone lines and call boxes to a wireless radio technology that allowed officers to be contacted in their cars and on the beat. Handwritten cards on a track eventually gave way to a computer-aided dispatch system that routed calls faster and more efficiently. Prior to 1975, a small group of women were assigned to the Juvenile Crime Prevention Division. They were known as police women. The scope of their duties was limited and they could not get promoted or even transferred to another division. This was changed after policewoman Lucille Abreu filed a federal lawsuit that required equal training and career opportunities for female officers. As the department headed into the computer age, many new advancements would occur in crime-fighting technology. During Chief Douglas Gibbs' tenure, the department adopted a more global perspective to address national and international types of crime. This includes the advancement of the HPD Crime Lab. Early criminalists and technicians processed evidence with a microscope and the few instruments available at the time. Today, the scientific investigative section is the only full-service forensic laboratory in Hawaii and serves the entire Pacific region. The automated fingerprint identification system went live in 1990. Designed to verify the identity of arrested persons, the system compares fingerprints recovered from the crime scene to the fingerprints that are already in the system. It previously took up to two days to confirm identities. Today, it takes about 15 minutes. Chief Gibb also introduced the highly popular Drug Abuse Resistant and Education D.A.R.E. program. D.A.R.E.'s mission was to educate students to stay drug-free and to resist violence and gangs. The highlight of the program was D.A.R.E. Day, a concert and rally where more than 15,000 students pledged to live drug and alcohol free. In the 1980s, law enforcement shifted its emphasis from traditional policing to community policing. Chief Michael Nakamura championed this philosophy of community policing, encouraging residents and business owners to partner with the police in the fight against crime. Neighborhood security watches and citizen patrols flourished serving as the eyes and ears of HPD. These groups continue to exist in communities across Oahu. Law enforcement technology developed rapidly from the beginning of the next century, and Chief Lee Donahue was quick to recognize this. His administration focused on officer safety, including state-of-the-art equipment such as body armor vests for all officers. HPD patrol vehicles were also equipped with automated external defibrillators to save victims of cardiac arrest. It was under Chief Donahue that HPD was awarded national accreditation by the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies. Under Chief Boise Correa's leadership, crime dropped to its lowest level in 30 years. Public complaints to the Honolulu Police Commission were the lowest ever recorded and all officer positions were fully staffed for the first time since the 1970s. His major initiatives include the mandatory arrest of domestic violence suspects, banning of assault weapons, and the creation of the state terrorist warning protocol. Chief Correa retired in 2009 and was succeeded by Chief Louis Kealoha. Chief Kealoha oversaw Hawaii's hosting of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Conference in 2011. Working with federal and state law enforcement, HPD helped to ensure the protection and safety of political and business leaders from throughout the Pacific. The Honolulu Police Department stands shoulder to shoulder with major city police departments across the nation. Our officers are proud to serve and be part of our community. We uphold high values of integrity, respect, and fairness, and serve and protect with aloha. Up next, we will see what HPD section is responsible for investigating major motor vehicle collisions and what you can do to minimize the amount of time you're stuck in traffic the next time one occurs. <laughs>